the pants have been a topic of discussion and for, for a whole host of reasons. A lot of our guys uh, as professional athletes require a little more TLC uh, uh, in regards to their pants than what we've got currently. Now being joined by the executive director of the MLB Players Association, Tony Clark, joining us for the second time on FT. Tony, how you doing? And how has your day been hanging out with the Philadelphia Phillies? It's been good. It's been good. Thanks, guys. Good to see you. Good morning. Um, just got out here to the East Coast. We made uh, made our rounds out in in uh, in Arizona this past week, but but having a chance to hit the ground running here in Florida. So it's it's been good so far. It's been good to be back in the locker room. Gosh, man. I mean. I made me wait a long time today i'm sitting out here i'm like all right i'm like if i can only do this put on my thumb so obviously listen as a former player i know how it goes in those meetings mm -hmm. and uh when, that's good when it's long that means people have questions yeah. players have questions you guys have answers for them yep and i don't want to know any specifics but as a whole are things things are looking up correctly like things are looking in a positive light from the player side because we on this show always discuss and we just discussed it with john Heyman. Mm -hmm. Revenue seems to be going up. Teams are not spending. So it's like, wait a minute. If revenue is going up, shouldn't teams be spending to get guys more salaries? Well, this this year has been a little different than the last couple of years and what we've seen. And I'm not speaking out of school. It's It's been a topic of conversation uh, with the guys, the experience uh, this offseason with the number of guys that are out there that can still help teams win ball games uh, is a bit peculiar. To say We're not going to use the C word, right? It's a bit peculiar. I'm okay. using the I'm using okay. the P word for now. <laughs> okay. Um, but but uh, uh, one that we're obviously keeping an eye on, and one that uh, uh, as the 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 free agent market goes through, we'll sit down with individual representatives as we do every off season, and try to appreciate what the conversations have been, what the experience has been, uh, so that we have an understanding, perhaps as to what it is that we're, we're seeing as opposed to just highlighting that we sit here in February and there are a lot of players out there that can help teams uh, uh, that uh, uh, should be looking to be the last team standing. So uh, a lot of open questions um, on the heels of, of a couple very good years coming out of the other side of bargaining and, and uh, we look forward to, to getting some answers to them sooner rather than later. Have you had any answers? Because all we heard about last year was attendance is up. Man, the game has never been in better situation you know we're we're running through fans are just excited about this attendance is up and all of a sudden er, nobody's paying anything wait was attendance up or was it not now we have an issue now TV we have money tv money so have you heard any even like a preliminary like response to any of anything like that there is there seems to be a number of of reasons being used uh, I, I think uh, the, the devil is always in the proverbial details, uh, and there's a lot of details that will likely never see the light of day that we are aware of. Um, having said that, um, everything that you just highlighted uh, is accurate. The industry did well last year. The expectation and projections for 2024 are high and remain high, uh, and that's why it is intriguing uh, when, when if being the last team standing is indeed uh, the, the focal point uh, of each ball club, uh, why it is that we have as many players that are out there that can help teams do that as we do. And so uh, you, you're not wrong in highlighting that things seem to be moving in the right direction. The question becomes why all of a sudden against that backdrop, we're seeing something manifest itself differently this offseason than we did the prior two. All right. So as a, again, as a former player, I have to ask the question. It was always something in bargaining, right? As when I was a free agent, it was, oh, this and this. It was always this offseason, the hot button topic for him has been, oh, the TV deals, and we don't know if we can spend on these TV deals. To me, it's just like, okay, this is just another, I don't want to say excuse, but another reason why, oh, we don't want to pay this guy, or we don't want to pay that guy, and oh, we're waiting. And some of the teams that should be spending aren't because they're like, oh, well, our TV deal. Listen, they some of these have settled their deals now, so shouldn't they be back on the table and say, man, there's some pretty good damn players out there I could go get. We remain hopeful. <laughs> we were, we were, hey, you know what's funny to me? You used to be so like player. Now you're so lawyer talk. Well, <laughs> we have a we have a number of of folks that uh, support me every day um, in, in that regard. <laughs> support players every day. But look, all, all joking aside, the truth is there are a lot of players out there that can help teams win ball games. There are a lot of teams out there uh, that could undoubtedly use players that can help them win ball games. Um, we do remain hopeful that despite this, the fact that we find ourselves here at the, the end of February, that 
that most, if not all of these guys, find homes here before camp breaks. Uh, if for no other reason than, A.J., what you just highlighted, um, some of the, the concerns that were otherwise offered, fact or fiction, at the start of the offseason uh, have, had, has, has, have had some answers to them uh, over the course of the last few months, such that if there is still an interest in being the last team standing, that there are players out there that can do it in teams that, that are otherwise equipped to provide that, that engagement. We're talking about winning, and, that, and that's really – that's that's ultimately the biggest thing is that teams want to win because players want to win. And I think we can get on the same page for that. This may not actually directly correlate with winning, but do we need to look at everybody's pants and say, what the heck is going on? <laughs> um, look, look, I, I I'm six, seven, two give or take too much at this point. So I, I will <laughs> offer you this. The, the the pants have been a topic of discussion and for, for a whole host of reasons. I would like to think that on the heels of of all of the dialogue that's been out there uh, and all of the the folks that are, are working behind the scenes uh, on the heels of the experience we've had the first uh, a week or two of camp that we can, we can get to where it's not a headline anymore. Uh, but it is disheartening to think that it has been uh, uh, as much of a topic of conversation when it didn't need to be at the outset uh, as it has been. So uh, I like my pants to fit. I couldn't just buy off the rack. Uh, no respect to those or no disrespect to those that can't. But a lot of our guys uh, as professional athletes require a little more TLC uh, uh, in regards to their pants than what we've got currently. This isn't a bargaining thing, though, is it? Like, <laughs> you can't go to the bargaining and table and say, hey, we need to discuss uniforms. Because wouldn't you, I mean, I feel like that's kind of something that should just be assumed that Hey, you're a major league player. You're going to have a cool uniform that fits you the way you want it. There, th that language that you just offered is not in the CBA. There is language <laughs> in the collective bargaining agreement and and in regards to our our business uh, uh, business with the league that highlights what needs to be issued, that it's going to be issued, um, and that players are required to wear what it is that that they're issued. And from a a licensing standpoint, uh, we have input uh, into what it looks like, and we offered input here going back to to 2022. Uh, when we got uh, a presentation on what the expectation was uh, this year. And so what we offered then and what we seem to still be talking about now are the same concerns, which is why I, I'm hopeful uh, that uh, uh, sooner rather than later, it can become a non-issue. A non okay, I'll take you to the next issue. Uh, Tony, I was just in Oakland, California for 15,000 people putting their own fan fest together, um, A's fans, of course, who are, of course, passionate, upset. And let me tell you, they're not following the team if they leave. I've asked all of them. They're moving on. They're like, I'm done with the sport or I'm going to root for the Oakland Ballers, which will be a new team in the Pioneer League. So first off, I wanted to know if you think that the PA will approve players playing in a ballpark in the minor leagues, like in Salt Lake City or Sacramento, for three or more years if the ballpark takes longer to put together because we haven't gotten much information on that yet. I spoke to the mayor. She said, they're not playing here in the Coliseum unless we get an expansion team. It sounds like that would be hard to believe. So I wanted to get your full on take here because I know players are buzzing about it. Yeah, I've, I, I appreciate the question. And look, having played in the Coliseum and having played in front of those fans, uh, the support for the Oakland A's has been tangible for as long as, as I've been anywhere near a field. So I'm not surprised that they put on their own fan fest in the fashion that they did. I've been very consistent in, in commentary uh, from our end, meaning sooner rather than later, a decision needs to be made so that the Oakland A's fans and, and the players themselves understand and appreciate what tomorrow may undoubtedly look like. Your first question, though, in regards to, to approving uh, where, where players may play, that's a bit of a TBD. We, we, we have to have some idea or appreciation for where the league is looking for these players to play such that we can engage on whatever that ballpark and the amenities around it look like such that uh, if there's a need to make improvements, if it's not in the Coliseum, then improvements will need to be made. And so that's, that's a conversation we expect to have at some point, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later, because it feels as if we've been talking about uh, this possibility for some time. But uh, going back really to where you started, the idea that Oakland A's are passionate is not a surprise. The idea that players, whether you're on Oakland or whether you're on other teams, are interested in this settling so that there's an understanding and appreciation for what tomorrow uh, may bring, all of that is front and center at the moment.
did you one did you guys learn anything from when the Jays had to play in Buffalo and yeah. Dunedin and all over the place? And then two, again, I keep going back to this because obviously I, I look at it from the player side. I was a former player. I don't know the other side, but there's no way the player association would let them say, "Oh, we're going to play 20 games in Sacramento, 20 games in Las Vegas, 20 games in Salt Lake, 20 games in Oakland," right? Because as a as a player, I, I got to have some sort of a home base to go go to and say, "All right, I'm a Sacramento A or I'm a." Las Vegas A or I'm a whatever A, Salt Lake City A, right? So there's no way that, that you guys would allow that to bounce around. There is 100, that is 100% a concern here. I'll, I'll offer uh, what has happened in the past. Uh, many of you may recall when, when Montreal left Montreal, they actually played home games at Puerto Rico during the uh, season. I played in Puerto Rico. Season. I got played, to go there. Played yes. there that year too. Um, and so it's, it's not new in the event that a team is moving to have another place that they otherwise call home. But I think I said earlier earlier in one of the questions that the devil's in the details. It's always in the details here for the exact reason that you just highlighted. From a, a logistics standpoint, what does that look like? How are the players and their families going to be uh, disrupted? How's the norm going to be disrupted? And thus, as a result, <clears throat> what does it need to look like in order to provide them the support that they need to, to accomplish a successful season, give themselves the best chance at accomplishing one. So <clears throat> whether it's in Salt Lake or whether it's in Sacramento or whether it's in, regardless of where it is, <clears throat> the, the conversation and the dialogue around what that experience looks like is a topic that we've sat down and negotiated with the league in the past and would anticipate doing so here. And if at the end of the day uh, uh, we can't find common ground, then we'll have to figure our way through that. <laughs> oh, you got work cut out. <laughs> Tony, one more for you on this. Um, you know, the, the commissioner spoke about how there's another team in the Bay area. So that obviously bothered fans that that's not how sports works. You don't just go, Oh, bye A's. I'll root for the giants now. Like, w w is anyone getting Krasinski to root for the Cubs? If the white Sox leave, I don't think so. I, I'm, I'm curious about that and how a plan like this gets approved. I know they don't have to run it through the PA, but, um, how a plan for ultimately Vegas gets approved, which, which, I think could be cool and a great expansion city at some point, but this specific regime that is running the A's doesn't have real renderings for us, doesn't have the funding in place, doesn't have this temporary home setup. I'm just confused how we said we got to Z without figuring out A through Y. Well, I'll offer to you this, that <clears throat> the, the, the threshold questions that they needed to meet in regards to for each con next conversation to happen uh, from a, a, a CBA standpoint, they've, they've met. So there may be things that, that publicly aren't out there yet that are happening in conversations <clears throat> that haven't been announced or, or, or represented. Um, but in regards to their process and, and how they get to, from point A to point B, I can't answer that one. Um, uh, uh, but I can tell you that in the conversations that we have had with the league, uh, and why my, my commentary has been consistent here. Uh, it, it literally is with an eye on whatever decision that needs to be made in order for us to engage on the next round of decisions that needs to be made. The sooner that can be done, uh, the better. So we stand ready to have those conversations at the point in time the league is ready to have them. I need a grade A to F on how the commissioner has done. I need then what in the next five years you think that a the current commissioner needs to do to make his legacy stick like i think most commissioners want yeah if i caught your first part of your question you asked me to grade the commissioner yeah. um I, i'm i'm not going to grade the commissioner uh, I, I will i will say this <clears throat> i will say this there have been any number of challenges that we've had over the last handful of years. The experience has been the experience. Uh, the game uh, at this point is moving forward. Uh, we sit down uh, to collective bargain in, in a couple of years. Um, I, I think a, a lot of commentary has already been out there in regards to, to the concerns that the other side has. Um, we'll see how those manifest themselves over the next couple of years and the lines of communication, despite what some folks think, remain open in that regard. So uh, I'm not going to grade uh, uh, anyone at this point, nor am I focused in on uh, uh, what a particular legacy may be for any one particular management side individual. I will tell you this. The concern from day one for me as a player, the concern from day one 
for me as an executive. It's the well-being of the game and our player fraternity. It doesn't really get more complicated for me and for us than that. So that will always be the case on this side. You'll never have to question or wonder what our motivations are in regards to protecting our player rights and advancing the game, the game that we've essentially sold our soul to, each of us, from the time we were knee-high to the table. And so where it's at now, where it's going, and the next generation that's going to come behind us and ensure that we leave the game better, that's what I'm focused in on. So if you want to ask me about about what our concerns are, that's how I would answer. But I can't answer in regards to to, to how management may want to view itself uh, on the flip side of of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, the responsibilities that they have. So yeah, let, then let's get into the concerns on the PA side. So Tony, there will be a, a new commissioner in place five years from now. I know it's still far away, but <laughs> what kind of person should the union hope to be working with in the future? You know, what what are the concerns that you hope can either be addressed in the meantime or when we get to five years from now can be implemented with someone else who is taking over and is working on a daily basis with the players? I mean, an example we use sometimes on our show, Adam Silver always mentions the players, the talent, the partnership, all of that. So I'm curious, you know, where you guys are at. So... You, you, you're not going to enjoy my answer on this one. Um, and, and what I mean by that is this. <clears throat> I mentioned two seconds ago that our collective bargain agreement expires in 2026. I'm not looking at what happens after 2026 at this point. Um, as a player, I'm kind of wired in the following way. While diligence is always done in appreciating how best to be successful today, you do keep your eye on what tomorrow looks like. I'm not denying that. Uh, but our, our focus at the moment is ensuring that we understand the dynamics at play around this existing CBA and what it is that we just negotiated to ensure that the things that worked, uh, we continue to, to focus in on them moving forward to ensure that perhaps in the same vein that they do, the things that haven't worked, how, is best to, how it's best for us to address them the next time that we sit down. And so uh, on the major league side, our agreement expires in 2026. On the minor league side, our collective bargaining agreement expires in 2027. Uh, so to the extent that that uh, uh, the commissioner's contract and his retirement goes beyond that, I'm not focused in on that and or who might otherwise be sitting in that seat. But I am very much focused in on what is happening right now and what the next round of bargaining is going to look like. So 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when we first played against each other. <laughs> you walk up to the play and we're in old Tiger Stadium and I'm like, God oh, damn, this dude's a monster. How am I going to compete with this guy, right? You walk up there, I don't know, smack a double, right? Now you're the executive director of the Players Association. Did you think, did you ever think this was going to be a career path for you? I know you were always involved, like we're all always involved. There's some more than others in the union and the whole deal, and we fight for our rights. But did you ever think that you were going to be this guy? Because you're the guy now everybody looks at as a player. We're like, Tony Clark, there he is. He's our leader, okay? And then what has surprised you about the job? Because, I'm as a, again, as a player, and I look at you and I'm like, Damn, he's got to see some. He's got to see some shit. <laughs> so, the, the the short answer to to wanting this role or being in this role was no. Uh, it wasn't the plan. It wasn't the goal. Uh, I think there's an old adage: if you want to hear the Lord laugh, just tell him what your plans are. I, I was fortunate to have played as as long as I did, and I was involved and uh, as an active player because I, I believed I had a responsibility to offer a voice uh, around the terms that were going to dictate my career. So even if it was long, it was going to be short while ensuring that the next uh, players had it better than I had, because that was how I was taught uh, coming in and, and what I wanted to ensure uh, on the way out. So no, being a part of, of the Players Association when I was done playing was not the goal. Um, it's interesting how the different moving pieces came to play uh, in the fashion that they did, such that I find myself in this role now. But going back to what I highlighted a second ago, as a result of, of, of this not being my dream job, I had my dream job. Competing against you on the major league field was my dream job, and I was fortunate to do it as long as I did. That's allowed me in this role to keep things very simple, not get caught up in, in a lot of the, the rhetoric and, the, and the, the, the politics that's often associated with uh, uh, the different moving pieces that are involved here. My commitment and my concern is... is the game, our players, and by extension, our fans, those that have supported our game as long as they have. That, that is what the concern is. And so um, being able to focus in on that 
on behalf of the players, understanding and appreciating what it, it looks like and feels like to, to don a pair of cleats, knowing what it feels like and looks like to be a fan in, in the ballpark and enjoying our game, understanding and appreciating what it looks like to deal with the media uh, or deal with, with, uh, with fans beyond the ballpark. Raising a family while you're doing it, ensuring the well-being of your future as you are a player, knowing that the music's going to stop no matter what it is that you do or no matter how long you play. Being able to focus in on those things while protecting and advancing the rights of our players makes my job and our commitment to it uh, a very direct uh, and very black and white. And so um, uh, glad for the opportunity that I had, glad that the players saw fit to put me in the role that I'm in, uh, glad that I am, I'm surrounded by a, a huge staff a very talented people who are all committed to the same thing. Glad that as the world has gotten more complicated and the CBA itself uh, has gotten more complicated, that we're positioned to navigate it, whether it's uh, what's going on here domestically in the U.S. or whether it's what's going on internationally, potential, or, uh, uh, particularly with as many of our players in our games coming from international uh, uh, locales. Uh, this has been a, a, a pleasure. Uh, my beard was dark when I started. It's white now, uh, which is a, a telltale as to, to, to how busy we tend to be day in and day out. But rest assured, grateful for the opportunity and the work that we've done uh, and the work that we are undoubtedly going to do on behalf of the, the players and our game moving forward. Being an ex-player, AJ being an ex-player, you being an ex-player, how engaged are the players right now? Because that is what is discussed in these meetings behind the scenes. How engaged are the players? Because you said 2026 is the next CBA. That's close. Mm. That is way closer. Give us a pulse on how engaged they are because there was years when I played where, to me, it was a concern. Like, hey, we guys, we have to get engaged. This is important. One of the things, Kratzy, that you're, you're highlighting is something that our, our fraternity has always had, which is quality leadership. Uh, and so even if there, there are, are, are players that uh, on any given day or at any given time are, are focused in on any number of things, the truth is uh, our, our organization has been what it's been and continues to be what it is and has had the successes amid the challenges uh, that we've had historically. It's against the backdrop of having quality player leadership that as much as, as we offer information, uh, as much as we engage guys on the ground, as I highlighted at the outset, being in the clubhouses again after not being in the clubhouses for five years has value. Uh, the truth is, as much as myself or Bruce Meyer or any one of our staff may stand in front of a room full of players and offer what it is that we offer, the truth is our strength, uh, as Marvin Miller said, is, is really not a secret. It's in the unity and solidarity and engagement of our membership. And so as long as we have good leadership, and we have and we will continue to, uh, we'll be able to navigate uh, any one particular issue at any one particular time. And in this instance, as we get closer and closer to bargaining, be positioned to navigate them as we always have. Tony, last one from me. Um, you mentioned how obviously the, the players are, are where your, um, your importance lies and, and the competitiveness of the game, the future of the game. So you're at Philly's camp today. We spoke about how John Middleton only talks about winning and spending and putting everything he can in to Phillies players in the franchise. So I'm curious with, with recent news, for example, of the Baltimore Orioles being sold and the new ownership group hinting that they are going to spend more and think about competitiveness, right? Because that team does not spend much even though they put a pretty good ball club together. If you look at that as a win, if this new group does what they have been hinted to be saying that they're going to do, and, and I'll, I'll add on just because this is the last question, would it be a win if the A's were sold? so that we could have an owner who comes in who spends money. We don't have to have that ongoing issue where we don't even know where the revenue share money is going. I think that's been a, a case still with the PA in the league for like seven years or something. So curious on situations like that, if you say, hey, if they're going to spend, they care about winning. It's a win if we get a new group in here that cares. Uh, I'll say this. Um, it's, it's great to hear teams talk about competing and wanting to be the last team standing. That's what all 30 teams should be talking about. That's when you, you, you have the, the commentary around hope spring or spring, uh, hope, hope springs eternal. And the idea that you have an opportunity to be the last, when they, we're talking about that, our game and our industry is in a better place. And so having ownership talk about being the last team standing and doing everything they can to ensure that is the case. That's what you like to hear as it relates to what a new owner may do, may, may do or, or what a, 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 an older owner may do. 
I think we need to watch and see what they do versus what it is that they say. Uh, in other words, it, it's at any given time uh, offering uh, uh, conjecture around uh, the willingness to spend and or compete and put the best product on the field possible is just that unless or until you do so. Uh, and so we'll see. Uh, in Baltimore. We just met with Baltimore. They are an exciting group of players. They obviously had a lot of success uh, last year, and we're hopeful that they continue to build on that because as they do, uh, it excites other teams to compete alongside them in a way that we know is beneficial. And so whether it's Baltimore or what it is that has been done uh, in Oakland, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens next in that regard as opposed to what it is that's being represented uh, verbally. So uh, I know uh, I tend to be more of a glass half full <laughs> than, than has, uh, half empty, uh, but I offer that to simply say, let's hope that the verbal commitments match what they actually do in the days moving forward. Okay, before you go, I just got to ask. I never officially retired. <laughs> Me either. So I haven't got my licensing checks for like seven years. So I mean, can I? Well, can I get? I used so, to get those in the mail every off season. So, so I'm just, I've been waiting. Yep. So I, I mean, I haven't moved. I moved before I was still playing. So, so maybe it's lost in the mail. Maybe my it's lost hasn't in the mail. Changed, though, um, so there's this this active versus oh. inactive thing that kind of comes into play. Uh, so I haven't filed my retirement papers yet either. So we can, but come, it, we can make a comeback. Well, yeah, but it's very clear I'm inactive. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> uh, so if if I put it this way, if if there are some checks floating around for you and I find them. Um, I'm guessing there may be some floating around okay. for me too, but at this point, I can tell you that they okay. they don't exist. Or, or when Bobby Bo gets paid next year, he can just kick me some of that. He yeah, that's a little it. different dynamic, but I can appreciate <laughs> that one too. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> no, no, thanks, thanks, guys. Thank you, Tony. You. Great to see you. Enjoy the rest of the camps. Always appreciate you guys. Be well. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy baseball the way it should be covered.